I'm here in Greenville at our Seven on Main studios with our medical expert, Dr. Cedric McFadden, Dr. C, and so thanks so much for being here, first of all. Yes, thank you. We are taking viewer questions today on the coronavirus. Uh, we did receive one from a viewer on our Facebook page. Does having the two pneumonia shots have any value if you get COVID-19? So the pneumonia shots that we currently have are not effective against coronavirus. This is a new COVID-19 is a new virus, so we do not have any vaccines that are protective. Now, that doesn't mean that you should not still get yeah. those pneumonia vaccines because they still can be protective against this pneumonia that you normally would get covered from yeah. that vaccine. I've made a call to my parents to make sure they had all still that. It, yes. uh, we are hearing about fever, coughing, and trouble breathing, uh, some of the symptoms. Are there other symptoms of the coronavirus other than those three? There are a few. I mean, you know, anytime you have an illness, you can have muscle ache and discomfort. 10% uh, of these patients may have diarrhea, they may have nausea. Uh, in addition, there are a few reports of folks having difficulty smelling or mm -hmm. difficulty tasting, yeah. and those are some of the reports that are coming out. Uh, also, is it safe? Let's talk about food, the, the food yeah. supply, people getting takeout yes. food and stuff like that. Is it safe to eat takeout food? Should you microwave your food once you get it yeah. home? Do, will yeah. that help? So that's a question that is starting to come up. Um, you know, this is not a foodborne illness. Uh, and so as such, it's not thought to be transmitted from the food that you eat. So it's still safe to eat takeout food. If you want to take precaution, you know, if you get food, transfer it to a plate. Uh, you do not need to microwave this uh, food to protect yourself from the virus. Uh, but wash your hands before. Take the necessary food precautions that you normally need to take. Yeah, I mean, you've paid for the food. You don't want to yeah. overcook it. Yes, you don't yeah. need to do that. Yeah, okay. Uh, another question. I was sick at the beginning of the year but had a negative flu test. Could I already have had coronavirus? So it depends on when in the year you're talking about. We weren't noticing the first cases until probably mid-January in Seattle. Um, and so if you had the disease, you know, in December, it may be unlikely that you had the coronavirus. But as we start to look at antibody testing, we could perhaps see whether or not you were or were not exposed and maybe have some immunity against the virus itself. Okay. Uh, you know, I was uh, seeing some reports. Children are not showing symptoms of coronavirus. Is that correct? Well, I'm not sure if they're not showing symptoms, but maybe they're not verbalizing what they may be experiencing. They may not be able to say, oh, I I'm, I'm having trouble breathing, or they may just be exhibiting tiredness or lethargy or fatigue. Those are some of the symptoms that even uh, elderly may be exhibiting that may not be as clear cut as some of the others. They still may have fever, so you should still be checking those temperatures. Okay, let's talk a little bit about um, things like a laser surgery, hernia repair, these non-electives or yes. electives? Those are elective those surgeries. Are elective surgeries. Yes. They're being canceled right now, but if, if they're not in some hospitals, should you go ahead and have them? So you have to be very careful because you don't want to expose yourself unnecessarily to potential sickness, okay? And so if it's not an emergency, if it's not urgent, if it's not life or death, you may want to consider holding off for at least, you know, four to six weeks until we determine, you know, what direction this is going. Okay, Dr. C, thanks Thank so much. You. You'll be back on Thursday. Yes. Appreciate it. See you.